Hi everybody, so when thinking about energy, particularly for windmills, it's not that difficult. Actually, energy is just force times distance, and it doesn't make a blind bit of difference if I do that with one of these, or if I do that with a windmill. So the wind isn't invisible, it's actually like little particles, it's like tiny, tiny apples. And somebody's throwing those tiny apples at the grass blade. When they hit the blade, then they wave the grass. And this is exactly what happens in a windmill really is the basic mechanism of it and of course what we want to know now is well how much energy is there so if energy is force times distance and force according to our newton is mass times acceleration then the thing we really need to know is what is the mass of air that is whacking that turbine mass is really just a function of volume and density the density of air is round about 1.22 kilograms per cubic meter somewhere round about there it does actually vary but that's a good enough average for us to use. There are two types of turbine, obviously. There's a HAWT and a VAWT. A HAWT is a bit like a massive circle and a VAWT is a bit like a massive square. So the area of a square, obviously, is height times depth and the area of a circle is pi r squared. So that gives us area, which is just great, but what we need is volume. Now, this bit it's a little bit tricky because to get the volume, of course, we need some kind of length of air that's going to move through there. And, well, how do you get that? There's no fixed length. So what we do is we choose an arbitrary amount of time because, remember, speed is distance over time. So if we choose a certain amount of time, and it can just be anything, actually, and we think about that air particle moving through that time, then it will cover a distance. So we can use the velocity of the air the speed of the air for a period of time and that will become the distance that the air will move and therefore give us a volume. Now it's okay to do this because we're interested in the power of the wind turbine and of course power is energy over time so this time will cancel out giving us an actual distance therefore a volume with density therefore a mass and we've got the first bit we need that is the mass of the air moving through. So if we remember from earlier, work is force times distance and force equals mass times acceleration. Now the distance something travels under an acceleration a for a time t is at squared over 2. So if we bung all of those together, what we get is an expression for kinetic energy, which is a half mv squared. If we multiply that by the mass that we've just calculated, then we get an expression for the power available in a wind turbine that relates only to the velocity of the wind speed and the size of the turbine that that wind is hitting. So calculating the available power for a wind turbine at a given wind speed is really just a piece of cake. Ever noticed how many triangles there are in physics? Anyway, that gives us the available power, the amount of power that's available in that wind that's blowing on your turbine. But of course there's a difference between the available power and the power that you get because there are losses involved in it. Now the first one is the one that probably everybody knows and that's the Betts limit. Now the Betts limit is not an arbitrary imposed limit. The Betts limit is a part of the physics of the system. It's a wind turbine so the, en the air must flow over the blades. If you take all of the energy out it'll cease to flow and so the wind turbine will stop turning. The maximum amount you can get out of it by having the air flowing over it and extracting some of the energy so that it continues to flow turns out to be 59.3%. That is the maximum you can draw out of a maximum power available to you. There are other constraints on it of course but the bets limit is the one that people get really quite concerned about because I guess it's you know, reduces a turbine efficiency down to 60%. In reality, most turbines are in the region of sort of 30 to 40% efficient at extracting the available power. Of course, then we have to do something with it. And somewhere between 3 and 10% are lost in transmission when it comes to turning it into electricity and transmitting it, just that section of it. Mechanical losses and electrical losses. Well, mechanical losses tend to be somewhere around about 0.3%. Electrical losses are somewhere around about 1 to 1.5%. So in comparison, they're quite small. 
The turbine, of course, is sited in a physical space, maybe with other turbines around it, with a local topography, and you can lose something like 5% of efficiency just for the sighting of it and the weight losses induced by the environment that it's actually in. And probably the other thing is the out of order. I mean, it's a machine, so machines break, and they reckon about two or three percent is going to be lost just in terms of the maintenance shutdown of keeping the thing running. So finally, I want to talk about the tip speed ratio. The tip speed ratio is one of those things that people go ape about and have no real idea why, apart from it's supposed to be a measure of efficiency, and we all think efficiency is something to worship, so that makes sense. What it is, is it's the ratio of the speed of the tip of the turbine blade to the velocity of the wind hitting it. What it actually means is um, if the blade turns too quickly what it does is uh, present like a solid wall and if it's a solid wall of course the wind is not going to go through it. If it turns too slowly then most of the wind is passing through that swept area without hitting a blade and so it's well wasted. So somewhere between those two you want the blade to be at a certain speed so that it catches most efficiently the wind that would go through the swept area. That's what it actually is. Now it's usually around about sort of six or so because they reckon that that's the most efficient. It does vary for different blade designs but that's what they aim for, for the speed of the tip of the blade in relation to the wind speed passing through. Now it is said that you can calculate torque from that. You can calculate torque if you have a power output and an RPM. You can calculate RPM certainly from the tip speed ratio. But an awful lot seems to be derived from it that I, I think is myself quite unnecessary. But it is one of those statistics that everybody wants to know about it. What is the tip speed ratio? And that's all it actually is. And there's a, a design figure that is supposed to be the most efficient. Anyway, that's probably enough mathematics and theory for a little while. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.